Good day everyone, my name is Alma P. Alombro and it's a pleasure that I will be sharing to you the topic that is assigned to me. So, we will discuss today the chapter 13 of El Filibusturismo, a class in physics. The story happens in a physics classroom in the University of Santo Tomas. Let's get to know the characters in the story. Padre Milan is a street professor. He discusses philosophical questions while teaching physics. He demands recitation word for word from the book. And he does not like science even though he teaches science subjects, which is ironic. He humiliates his students by insulting them in front of the entire class. He does not realize that ranting for the rest of the period makes the rest of the class hate him rather than agree with him. The next character is Placido Penitente. He is a very intelligent student from the University of Santo Tomas who always strives to control his temper in the face of oppression from his professor. But when filled to the brim, he exploded. Padre Milion calls him Placido Soplon, Tarel Tail, or Soplado, Swellhead. Juanito Pilaes. He attends physics class taught by Padre Milion. He makes the class laugh by commenting that Kamagong is the mirror of wood. He is the class clown. He does not react badly when insulted. Instead, making more funny comments to lighten the mood. The last one is the fat student, a fat boy with a sleepy face and a hair stiff and hard like the blue walls of a brush. He yawns constantly in the class. Father Leon calls him sleepy head and a lazy student. He memorizes the lessons straight from the book. Father Milian's classroom has no physics-related decorations, even if his class is physics. Occasionally, he shows the tool or the laboratory, but students are not permitted to use them. It is only meant to impress visitors. He begins the class by a roll call and asks students to recite lessons from memory, giving good grades to those who make no mistakes. A fat student yawns and Padre Milion scolds him. The students laugh. The fat student immediately launches into a memorized lesson about the classification of mirrors, but is bewildered when Padre Milion asks him questions requiring analysis. He asks the fat student, what type of mirror does Kamagong or marble qualify as? The fat student ignores the questions and continues talking, saying metal mirrors are formed by brass or alloys, and that glass mirrors are formed by two well-polished sides with one side having tin in it. When it appears, the class clown says Kamagong is a mirror of wood. Everyone laughs. Harry Million asks what happens if you remove quicksilver from a mirror and put Bibika on it instead. What do you have? The fat student gets more stressed. Bonito Pelaez speaks. Now you have a Bibinka. The professor next calls on his favorite Juanito to answer a question about the composition of mirrors. Juanito signals to Placido for answers, but Placido cannot help, and is in turn called upon by the professor. Juanito does not know what to say. He then steps on Placido's penitentist boots. 
Blessed or penitent calls Juanito Pilar is an idiot, which party millions hears. Party million calls Placido Penitente because he wants to humiliate the smart Alec, who is always well dressed in class. Placido is also unable to answer, and when the professor asks him to recite, he makes mistakes, earning him a bad mark. He asked him his full name and made fun of how his last name, Penitente, does not fit him. He calls him Placido Soplon, Tally Tail, or Soplado, Swellhead. He further announces that Placido has had 15 absences despite his having really had fewer. Placido reasons that he could not have recited and have been absent at the same time. Padre Million insults him for philosophizing. Placido declares he has had enough. He has an outburst and leaves the class. The class is shocked of what they just witnessed. Padre Million lectures them on youths disrespecting education and their elders yet trying to teach their teachers by setting up an academy for the teaching of Spanish. The class ends after Padre Million rants for a long time, and the students are relieved, but now feel hatred instead of enthusiasm for their classes. As an educator, there are things that we can learn from this story. Number one, there are teachers who are not qualified to teach the subject. Just like Padre Million, he is primarily interested in metaphysics and handles classes in philosophy and theology, after which he teaches chemistry and physics. He also has no respect for his students as he frequently insults them and calling them names. Teachers must inspire and empower students and not destroy them. He habitually throws questions to students but does not want to be questioned because his limited knowledge of the subject would be exposed. He lets his students memorize the book word for word without explaining the lesson. And lastly, our students will respect us if we respect them as well. Like Placido, he was forced to retaliate because of the insult he receives and because of his teacher being unreasonable. Now let us look at the implication of pedagogical strategies in the 21st century. I am Sairan Capistrano Osenia and I will continue the discussion this morning. After we discuss the chapter 13, the class in physics, we have dealt with these various pedagogical strategies. And of course, we have to understand this pedagogical creativity. For the benefit of the learning fraternity, one of the innovative pedagogical strategies is to make use of creative tools that will excite the artistic senses of students. You as a teacher can positively influence the curious mind of students through the inclusion of visual exercises and games. Tools strike a chord with the young minds, encouraging them to stress their creativity. Unlike with what happened during the classrooms spearheaded by Padre Million, we have to involve our students and let them explore with the topic that we have to discuss. Brainstorming techniques. It is the second strategy in 21st century. Wherein it is a potent exercise to infuse excitement into learning. When kids or students are encouraged to come up with the different ideas without the fear of being judged, whether they will find brainstorming sessions engaging and interesting. 
It is happened during the class when Padre Malion argues with Placido Penitente about the lesson on mirrors. I think one of the students feel disappointed right after conducting this class. The next one is the use of audio video teaching tools. Modern technology has indeed changed the face of every sphere that is connected to mankind. Classroom lectures themed with audio video tools, students will benefit in more ways than one. Apart from sharpening their audio and visual skills, they will also start to understand the concept being deeper and deeper. Infographics, mind maps, and brain mapping tools are some of the pedagogical alternatives that will go along in a way expanding the imagination of students. While during the situation happened in chapter 13, it is mentioned that no physics-related decorations are present in the classroom. Occasionally, the teacher shows a tool or the laboratory but students cannot use them and the laboratory is only meant to impress high officials. The, the laboratory is used for pre preparatory classes taken by Athenaeus, but no famous physicist has ever came from the Philippines. The concept of learning outside the classroom is the next one. Traditional learning was also restricted to take place within the four walls of classroom. Modern and innovative learning is possible only when lessons are taught outdoors. Padre Million does roll call and students have to recite the lesson word for word. It is a very important part in the chapter that we have to analyze. A fat student yawns and Padre Million scolds him. The students laugh. The fat students recite the lesson on the mirror. So there is no exploratory experiences within the classroom during their time. Teamwork, the new age teaching mantra. Why don't we take a step forward and join hands with our contemporaries? New horizons of teaching will begin to emerge when we try to incorporate the suggestion offered by our colleagues. So, it is very much important because you may seek the recommendation of your associate in trying to improve the teaching methods. Every teacher may come up with a different yet workable strategy. But during the session in the chapter 13, one of the scenario happened when the fat student wants to deny Padre Million because a court official once told him. Because he, ha he who denies everything commits to nothing. His seat made signal at him to concede, so he says, Concedo Padre. Although we are talking about the way, that specific situation neglects the sense of unity. Hobbies interesting diversion to break the monotony. All work and no play makes Jack a dull man. This is so true in the case of teachers who are ordained to take classes so that they are in sync with their lesson plans. It is very much important for us to analyze their interest for them to motivate well on how to involve in every activities given to our students. So, for instance, we will recall the situation happened in our chapter 13, Million asked for the full name of Placido Penitente. Then, orders Placido Penitente to recite the lesson. Because he's nervous, Placido Penitente makes more than three mistakes. Padre Million finds Placido's name in the roll call and points out 15 absences. Placido Penitente argues that he was only absent five times including today. 
Padre Milan says that since he rarely does roll call, he places five notes per absences. So Placido Penitente would have 25 absences. During that time, I realized that we have to motivate our students optimistically, not in a very pessimistic way. Pessimistic way. teaching and learning practice. You will agree with the fact that a subject that is delivered in the form of story has a longer retention span. Hence, modern teachers can take to storyboarding with any subject that calls for a methodical memorization of facts. If you are a history teacher, you can make a session even more interesting by recreating a famous and important event. Unlike with what happened during the class, it is a teacher-centered, wherein all of the questions will be raised by the teacher, then the student will answer. And in living classroom, which classroom according to you will stimulate the minds of students, allowing them to learn and think better? A jingy one or a vibrantly decorated classroom? So, as far as I remember, without a doubt, you will go with the bright classroom, of course, when students are made to sit within the four walls of classroom, work hard in maintaining an enlivening learning atmosphere. Bright colored classroom positively impacts students alongside, encouraging you to give your best to every teaching session. In one scenario happened in the class, so a million does welcome and students have to recite a lesson before. And the first student yawns and Padre Mignon called him. The students laugh. The first student recites the lesson on the mirror. Although we are talking about the environment, of course, we have to consider the general aspect of our classroom environment. be encouraged to give their best to the task at hand with an intention to play their role to the fullest. Subjects like current affairs, literature, and history are best taught through role plays. Students partaking in role plays will begin to exhibit their creativity by stepping out of their comfort zone. So our students will be uplifted and develop their self-esteem and don't allow our students to be disappointed right after the class. Okay? The fun element to learning is very much important also because fun element to learning should always be kept in mind. Learning should be fun and for you to encourage your students to learn and recall better, you can bank upon interesting games and puzzles like banking education we have to apply this these are innovative tools that will impart quality education to the learning fraternity sparing them of the strain that academics come with refer to a collection of books on creativity be abreast with creative teaching techniques and ideas when you fall short of such ideas it is time you to take support of books on creativity. Reading works published by top class writers will not only help you to tread the path of professional development, but will also help you articulate the, the acquired knowledge to your student as well. So, to tell us honestly, in our current situation, some of the teachers, educators, and mentors refuse to uplift their professional growth. It is because they keep on thinking that they are senior and they will be considered as a superior. But instead of thinking that way, the teacher must consider some upliftment like attending seminar, 
for some innovations and training. Ember, develop an open mind towards new teaching methods. Only when you welcome new ideas connected to teaching, you will prompt your students to try their hands at new things. To start off with, any new idea might come with a certain degree of awareness. But you need to learn to overcome the fitting problems. After that, the sky is the limit. As far as I remember and I mentioned a while ago, we have to uplift our capability to deal with. Not just for the reason of promotion, but for the sake of our students and to deal with our obligation as a teacher. School groups and clubs, platforms to share knowledge and common interests. Start off a school group or club. Work on topics that are interest to you. You can collaborate with like-minded teachers and collect insights and knowledge from them which can prove to be of utmost benefit to you and to your student as well. As addition, you engage in your students, a story has the power to enhance the quality of your teaching. It makes topics interesting and appealing. While you begin to struggle with new ideas, you will be setting the stage for students to experiment with ideas that come out of the love for knowledge. So for the love of knowledge, not for the fame of knowledge. And always remember, one head eat. Tap into the potential of this story. Some approach have a longer recall span as compared to those that are taught by referring to black and white text. So as far as I remember, and students have to decide good word using memorization. So we are talking about this memorization. We have to deal with this activity for them to be familiarized and for them to uplift and develop functionally, not just for being familiar because of memorization without applying and without understanding to the statement given from the story. Make teaching your passion. If you love what you do, you don't have to work a single day. This belief is so true with any profession, especially with teachers who are ordained to bring in a lot of creativity and imagination to academic lesson. So as what we have saying, when you look at your teaching profession as your passion, you will make room for a relaxed teaching environment that will charm your students in more ways than you can imagine. Unlike what happened during the class of Father Padre Million, when Blessed Look and Atente and shout out enough padre enough your excellency can mark me with all the absences you wish us but you don't have the right to insult me so it is not a good sign for us to identify the capability of the teacher and of the situation happened to that Kailangan nating tandaan na tayo bilang guro ay hindi lang guro. Ang ating pagiging guro ay para sa pagbabago at sa pag-unlad ng ating mga mag-aaral. Hindi sa pagkakamali ng landas na dapat ay hindi nila tinatahan. To sum it up, all in an attempt to enhance the quality of teaching, it makes sense for the tutors of today to implement modern pedagogical practices. When these methodologies and ideas become the way of life of both teachers and students, the day is not far away when the institution of tutoring will become the strongest form of imparting conceptual knowledge through tested means. We have here the references for 
your guy. Again, we are your. Thank you very much for your participation. Keep safe and God bless.